GDS Bender Element Software, or GDS BES, allows for the measurement of soil stiffness at small strains using the GDS Bender Element system. The GDS software starts with a simple test wizard for configuring your test. On the first wizard screen, the sample height is entered as follows. This is required for the software to calculate the velocity. Data acquisition options are then set. The sampling frequency here is fixed at the maximum rate of the card being used, whereas the sampling time may be adjusted. Either automatic gain or manual gain may be selected for the acquired data. The next button is pressed to proceed to the next test wizard screen. On the second test wizard screen, the source waveform or excitation wave is defined, either as sinusoidal, square or user defined from a text file. The period and amplitude of this waveform may then be selected. The next button is pressed to proceed to the next test wizard screen. On the third test wizard setup screen, time domain stacking options can be set as either manual acceptance or automatic stacking. When automatic stacking is selected, every acquired trace is added to the stack, whereas when manual is selected, only those that the user wants to add are added. Manual trigger performs shots on a user button press, whereas the software trigger allows a number of shots to be performed with a user specified time delay between shots. The software trigger may only be used in conjunction with automatic stacking. With all of these parameters set up, we may now proceed to the Bender Element test screen. The large trigger button in the centre of the screen causes the source element to oscillate. The resulting data is displayed on the graph, which can be zoomed into by right-clicking on the graph and dragging to the required section to be zoomed. Here we can clearly see the red excitation trace of the source element and the green response trace from the receiving element. By moving the mouse across the plot with the left mouse button depressed, a dotted line appears on the graph. This is positioned to form the selection for the arrival time, or in this example, the first peak of the source trace. When the position of this line is considered correct, we choose to accept pick 1. Now we can select the first peak of the response trace. This line may be moved using either the mouse or the fine and coarse movement buttons, as shown. The software displays the time difference between the chosen source and received trace picks. Here, 0.31 milliseconds. Using the specimen height entered in the test wizard, this translates to a shear wave velocity of 322.6 meters per second. Let me take you quickly around some of the other features of the software. For this example test, we have automatic gain ranging. We can see the current gain setting here at times 400. If I reset this to the maximum gain of times 4000 and perform another test, we can see that this gain reduces to the largest appropriate gain without clipping the received trace. The GDS Bender Element System has a total range of 16 gain settings between times 10 and times 4000 to allow the best resolution of the received trace to be, re to be acquired.
To perform a P-Wave test, the source must first be changed to a P-Wave source. This changes the hardware so that the source element is now in the base of the sample and the received element is in the top. Due to the faster speed of P-Waves, in this example I am going to change the excitation signal to be a square wave and I will increase the period of the wave to 4 milliseconds. In this way the point of excitation can be more clearly seen. If I now re-trigger and pick the arrival times as before, we can see that the P-wave velocity here is displayed as 1,666 meters per second. It is possible to reverse the polarity of the excitation and select to fix the first trace. Now when I re-trigger the source I can study the original received trace along with a reversed trace. Due to the non-reversal of the S waves compared to the P waves, this helps us see if there is any interference by S waves into our P wave trace. As a demonstration of the manual stacking capability, I will first take the system back to an S wave source with a sinusoidal excitation with a period of 0.2 milliseconds. Now, after each test, I can add the stack to a main data stack. Stack data is displayed on a graph with a blue background. If we have a noisy data set, the noise will be seen to visibly reduce with increased data sets in the stack. The test data may be saved at any time as either a stack or as a single trace by pressing the save button. Once the test file is saved, we can change the effective stress on our sample and perform a new test. This takes us back to the start of the Bender Element Test Wizard where we can set up a whole new test stage.